Um, our next speaker is David Barros from um, GSK. Welcome, David. Thank you, Carl, for your invitation, Deborah. It's great. It's my first, my first meeting uh, with you. We have previous participations from other <coughs> colleagues, but I have to say I, I'm planning to, to attend more if invited. So um, what, it is a 10 minutes, so it's a crazy thing for me to do in 10 minutes an update on what we do in the company. So this TV DPU is a unit entirely dedicated to research of new drugs. We've been working for 15 years, and therefore you can expect that if we have been alive this, this time is because we have a, a portfolio. <coughs> um, so uh, if, I, if I try to attempt and give you an update of what we do here, it would be impossible. Thanks to Andreas, he has covered uh, my little kit, the petrolactams, that we, or myself, have been working on it for the last six years and, and have seen the light, and he has made a, a, a great presentation. So uh, rather than going on, on all of these programs, the ones that are properly GSK are in orange, our company color, and the others means collaborations. And I would like just to outline the bottom line that you have in there. That means <coughs> uh, that every project that we do is done in collaboration with someone. Uh, we've been funded by many different organism, uh, organizations uh, and organisms. Um, and, and I would like to remark the collaboration uh, and the sponsorship for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation particularly, and the collaboration with the TV Alliance and the TV Drug Accelerator that probably is the originator or the end up uh, origin of uh, the end up of, um, of all these projects. So instead, instead of doing this, um, um, I'm gonna show you just one project. Um, um, I'm going to talk about briefly, uh, probably this section could, could perfectly be aligned with Nader's presentation afterwards because this is a project that is just transitioning into humans, but I understand the reasons why it was brought up into, into this part. So again, this is a result of a collaboration amongst many people, um, people that is currently working with it. Some of them are in the room, uh, um, belonging to the organization. Uh, uh, <coughs> organizations that are in the in this slide. Um, so here is the beef, and at least th that B doesn't go for beef, goes for, for boron. So uh, this, is, this is very unusual. There are very few compounds that are used in clinical practice using a boron. I can think of Belcade and then a topical uh, Tavaborol that is being done by Anacor, that are the ones that have the expertise in the use of uh, uh, boronates for uh, the treatment of infectious diseases. This is a particular case because we are talking about uh, a, a compound that will be exposed, oral, orally exposed and systemic exposure of, of a compound. And here the safety is, is, is paramount. So uh, the, the, this project um, stems out from a former research being done at Anacor that discovered that this family of compounds, benzoxaborals, inhibit the tRNA lure S synthetase. So we are talking about, it's a, it's a, a, a target-based project that we know what uh, we are inhibiting. We know we are inhibiting the protein synthesis. And we know that this inhibition, it is different from that of the uh, aminoglycosides or the oxazolidinones, et cetera. Uh, and this was created as a broad antibacterial program, and I was asked, okay, you can work on this, but you have to make a completely selective compound for TB. And it was coming from a completely broad antibacterial project. So that was, that was a, a very challenging uh, bit. But I can tell you that uh, <coughs> throughout the uh, optimization uh, process, we managed to do this, um, and we discovered Um, that when we substitute in this position and in this position of the standard on the simple compound, we could uh, uh, reinstall full activity against TB and deplete the activity against other bacteria. Uh, when everything became more and more interesting was when we first tested this series of compounds. 
And what you have in here is a representation of the activity in the mouse model, the standard similar to what Eric uh, uh, does or Anne does, uh, where we represent the decrease in the uh, colony forming units in the lungs of mice and on the x axis, the dose in milligram per kilo. So, what you have in here is a compound that have a cytal behavior despite of being a protein synthesis inhibitor. Uh, so, it de decreases the CFU counts in the lungs more than two lobes over a period of six days. And what is particularly, or what uh, uh, it, was, it was very interesting from this compound, is represented in this orange box on the left, and it's the dose. So the compound works at extremely low doses and have even the potential for an alternate dosing. So we can retain the activity of the compound even if you dose the compound every 96 hours. And that, that was, that was uh, striking for us. So uh, we continue doing research on, on, those, on those series. And what you have here is an evolution from what we knew before that it was the, um, um, the activity in acute mice model. So we're just checking how the compound works against um, um, <coughs> bacteria that replicates actively in the lung with the chronic infection, in, again in the mice. So what you have represented in here in the left-hand side is the activity in the chronic model. Um, and what we are going to measure again is the CFU counts in the lung. So as you can see, over the period of four months, there is a constant decrease on the uh, uh, CFU counts in the lungs of the mice. Uh, just you can, you, if someone is asking if this is linked to resistance, it's not. It's just an artificial uh, uh, decrease. We have, we have repeated and tested. So what we can see is that, again, in a chronic uh, um, infection, the company is able to have, again, a sidle response. Um, with these interesting results and working in collaboration with the TV Alliance and the John Hopkins University, um, we start uh, um, evaluating how the compound behaves in combinations with other drugs. So we have done uh, um, many. Uh, you can ask Eric. Uh, I have just used one representation here to show you what the compound does. So what you have on the left, on the right hand side, <coughs> is a representation in Eric's model of what the standard of care does, this yellow uh, box, uh, RIFA-4, after one month of treatment. Day zero counts is the dotted line on top. And then on the blue box is where the combination PAGL does after a month. And the last box, this green box, is what the combination does when we add 6 by 6 to that combination. That was, that was interesting because we can always think that the protein synthesis inhibitor, when it's done on top of linezolid and and uh, PAA24, pretomanate uh, and, and, and betacoline wouldn't have much to add, but, but it is not the case. And we have tested in many different combinations. And in most of those cases, 6 by 6 always bring. So um, probably uh, all, this, all this is interesting, but um, when you put all, all these pieces together, uh, everything starts to make sense. So one of the reasons why many compounds fail or have encountered problems when you develop the compound is because they do not have good physical chemical properties. And then you face pro problems to have a proper evaluation of the toxicity, formulation, et cetera. So we have an excellent compound. It's less than 250 uh, units, uh, the molecular weight. It targets a novel mode of action. It's a selective antituvercular, so it's active in the, uh, um, uh, the um, like nanomolar concentration equally against drug sensitive or drug resistant isolates is totally inactive against any other bacteria that we have tested to date. There is no cross resistance with other uh, drugs and it has a, a, a bacteriostatic behavior in vitro but sidal in vivo and this is something that we have observed with other protein synthesis inhibitors that uh, probably uh, is something that uh, is curious, but it's something that we have to make a, take advantage of it. Uh, we have completed, and I don't have time now to go and, and explain, but I can take any questions that you make to me. Um, we have already completed all the safety studies and the GLP tox studies in across the species in rodent and mice, um, and there is nothing uh, precluding the progression of a compound into humans. 
uh, uh, the last bit is, is, is very remarkable. The compound has a very, very low projected dose in humans. When I say they, they're lower than 200, it is really lower than 200 milligrams per day. Uh, obviously, th these together with the absence of drug drug interactions uh, make of this compound a nice, a nice hit on the block. Uh, we expect to have a, a, the compound tested into humans on the third quarter of this year if Global Safety uh, Board approves. Um, so uh, you will wonder how, how are we going to um, move to this uh, forward. So the idea is now is, is to embark ourselves in the uh, single dose and repeat dosing for uh, first time in mind that we will be extended for four weeks with the food effect arm. And then we will move to a phase 2A, uh, proof of concept studies, where we are planning to do uh, monotherapy and uh, combinations in drug-sensitive TB patients, because it's what is available and it can, can be done, and the compound fits with the profile. Uh, we will dis impl implement this with the next, what is named next generation EVA, that we are not going to just measure uh, sputum, uh, um, CFU units in the sputum, uh, samples, but we will also do a PET CT scan on the patients in collaboration with Cliff Barry at his new uh, uh, placement <laughs> in UCT. Um, and then, and then, if the information here makes sense, we plan to evolve in the in the uh, universal uh, treatment. So we will uh, aim to have a drug sensitive and MDR uh, studies, uh, probably, or we hope to be uh, done in collaboration with our friends from from TV Alliance and, and then try to move it forward. And this is all the people that have uh, um, uh, collaborated with it. And, and I have included here uh, the NIH and Laura that have very recently um, also tested the compound into the marmosets and we are just all expecting to have the results uh, very shortly, but uh, so far data looks very good. Um, if anybody is attending the European Congress of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases in Amsterdam uh, next week, the whole of the compound will be presented, every single data on, on the compound. So those attending there will have the opportunity to ask my colleagues. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, any questions for clarification? Okay, thank you, thank you very much.